welcome to Clash of the Nerds. I am your humble host, The Judge. And today we are deciding the fate of the Star Wars Expanded Universe, or Legends as it is known. In one corner we have Marvel stating that Legends should be returned and brought back. And in the other corner we have DC saying that it should stay dormant. They will both present arguments, counters, and final, they both have opening statements, counters, and closings before we decide the fate. First up, we see the floor to Marvel. The EU, or Legends as they now call it, should be continued. For a, long, for a lot of different people, such as myself, it is Star Wars. It came out at a time when there were no movies. It got me personally into reading. I wasn't a big reader. And my teacher, Mr. Was it Mr. Needs, yeah, he said to me, are you a Star Wars fan? And me and my friend were talking about Star Wars, and he's like, oh, you like Star Wars? He's like, do you know there were sequel series? And he introduced me to Hair of the Empire, and it literally changed my life. That book altered the course of my whole destiny. So for a lot of people, that is Star Wars. That represents what it is. And to just throw it away and discontinue it, it seems like such a waste. And there's no reason that in this day and age, we can't have both. You can, you can keep your Disney Wars, but give us back the EU. Because it means so much to so many people. Thank you, Marvel. Now, DC, your opening. The Star Wars Extended Universe was a wonderful thing, and it gave us a lot of good stuff, but it had its time in the sun. And if we don't look at it through rose-colored glasses of nostalgia, but really look at it and are honest with ourselves, we would admit that while it had some diamonds in the rough, it was a lot of rough. It was incoherent, messy, disorganized. We are at a time and a moment in history where we could tell a good, solid, well-crafted story about the Star Wars universe with one voice, one general direction. Not people going whatever which ways, but solidified, unified. And to do anything less would be a disservice not only to the creators who want to work on this wonderful universe and this wonderful playground, but also to the fans who deserve good storytelling. Well said, both of you. So Marvel, it's your turn. If you would like to explain the importance of the EU and why it should be continued, why we need it. I would love to, thank you. Um, so like, like I said in my intro, the Star Wars Expanding Universe was something that meant so much to me. It, it made me a reader and becoming a giant reader turned me into a writer. It literally shaped the course of my life. You have to understand that people older than me, they had the original trilogy. People younger than me had the prequels. People nowadays have the sequel trilogy. What I had, Star Wars was a, ser was a, it was a trilogy that was done and gone. But those books were new, they were fresh, they were everything. I mean, when I think Star Wars, I don't even think the original trilogy. I think New Jedi Order. And that trilogy meant so much to me too because I was in the thick of it. Towards the back half of it when I moved to Texas from California. A time when I lost all my friends, everything I had ever known, and I started a new life. And those books helped me adjust to the new reality that I was living in. It literally built the foundation of who I am as a person, almost more than anything else in pop culture. Now, I mean, there are other things in the real world that help too, but it is a fundamental part of who I am as a human being. And the stories, while not always being of the same level of quality, but not every writer is Timothy Zahn, I'm sorry. <laughs> they were going in the general direction. You could tell that there was a care and craftsmanship in those books to not step on one another's toes 
One writer would do this kind of story, another writer would do this kind of story, but they were all going in the same direction and they would build off of each other. It was very much reminiscent of old school Marvel where it was all in the same universe, all the same characters, all moving forward. And maybe there were mishaps every here and there, but those were the exceptions, not the rules. And it just, it continued the saga of Star Wars the best way it could through characters and legacy because Star Wars is really a story about legacy and those books carried that forward and gave it to the next generation the prequels are about Anakin the original trilogy is about Luke this stuff was about Ben and Jaina and Jason and Anakin and it moved the story on to the next generation of characters. Must how Degrassi did. It's what you would want for the future of Star Wars. And it ended with Jaina marrying Jag and Jag becoming the and Jag is the Emperor now and the Galactic Alliance is infested with Sith and the Jedi are kind of outcasts. We're hanging out with the Empire now. And it's just it dealt with the complicated, it dealt with the world as if it was complicated, as if it was the real world, how complicated life can get, the Star Wars universe was getting, and it was just such a good time, and we had been building to the Sword of the Jedi for pretty much since I was a kid, they talked about Jaina being dubbed the Sword of the Jedi and what it meant, and the next trilogy to come out was called Sword of the Jedi, and it was all about Jaina, and they took that from us, and it's something that we still want, people, there are still fans clamoring for it. And I guarantee you, Disney would not lose money doing this. They would make money. They would make tons of money. I mean, those Star Wars books back in the day were making New York Times bestseller list every time they would come out. Because they were good. They were made with care. They were made by fans who loved what Star Wars was and wanted to keep building on it. That is why the extended universe should be brought back. Very well said, DC. Why should it not be continued? Simple. Because having too many different versions of something confuse people, it clouds the market. It's why we don't allow two companies to have the same name. It's why we have copyrights. It's why we do these things. Because if you have one set of Star Wars books talking about Kylo Ren and the First Order, and then you have another set of Star Wars talk books talking about Jason Solo and the second galactic civil war it's going to confuse people you have people going to the movies watching what's happening and then going to the bookstore because they want more and stumbling across this alternative history that is meaningless to the story and it confuses them and then it turns them off to the whole thing that is the last thing that anyone wants we want more fans not less so I'm sorry that those books are done, but they need to stay done. We're working on this new story, and it's a great story. And we need to continue down that path and build upon it. Not second-guess our decisions and go backwards. This is a discussion that should have been had when they were first talking about it, not now when the sequel trilogy is about to end. The EU is dead, and it needs to stay dead. To bring it back would just confuse people. And it would show a lack of faith in the movies which are doing killer. Have you seen their numbers in the box office? They are making bank. People are loving them. Just ding dong, Star Wars is dead. Go Star Wars. Long live Star Wars. Because, let's be honest. You talk about Star Wars being continued by fans. J.J. Abrams is a fan. And The Force Awakens was a love letter to Star Wars like nothing I've ever seen before. More of that and less of random people just doing whatever they want with the name Star Wars. And we are in good hands. Very well done. Marvel, your counter. All right, um, just, just to be clear, Star Wars fans by and large are nerds. And most nerds, not all, but most grew up on comic books. 
Now, comic books reboot things all the time. Sometimes it's soft reboots, sometimes it's hard reboots. DC does hard reboots every couple decades. Marvel had Prime Earth and the Ultimate Universe going at the same time, and nobody was confused. There's not a single fan who was confused by that. Everybody understood the differences between it. Hell, Sliders, a TV show from the 90s, introduced us to alternate realities. Nobody was confused by that. You don't have to treat your audience like they're idiots, because they're not. Your audience is smart and intelligent and engaging, and they can follow along and they can distinguish between two different universes with the same characters. They were groomed for this from a lifetime of reading comic books. And if, you're, if your big concern is that they go to a movie, and they go to a bookstore, and they pick up a book, and then they're confused because the story is different, I'm sorry. But Barnes & Noble's, Half Price Book, Amazon, all these places still sell Extended Universe books a lot more of them than they sell the new Star Wars books. So is your audience getting confused now? Is your, you really have that little faith in your audience that you don't, you don't see the problem there? And then you throw out the EU because it's a cluttered mess, as you say, full of stuff that is irrelevant, you don't like. But then you start borrowing characters and storylines. I mean, The Force Awakens was heavily, heavily borrowed. Not just from A New Hope, as everyone called it out on, but on Legacy of the Force. A lot, a lot of this whole sequel trilogy was based on that. Not to mention the fact that when the movie was announced and they announced they were throwing away the EU to make this wholly original movie, one of the guys who wrote it had just died. It was being buried that weekend. They disrespected him and his work and then stole that plot for their movie. That is not something a fan would do. Plus, The Last Jedi, which I didn't have a problem with, like a lot of people did, with the casino scene. I actually kind of liked the casino scene. It was the only part of the movie I really kind of liked. But that movie disrespected Star Wars as a whole. That wasn't... Star Wars is a, a series at its core that is about legacy and destiny. Those are the two core tenets of the Star Wars universe. Legacy of the Force was a movie saying that your legacy doesn't matter and that there's no such thing as destiny. You watch that movie, those are the themes that play heaviest in that movie. And if you want to make a movie that legacy and destiny aren't important, great. That's a great idea for a movie. I love it. There are plenty of movies that do that well. You cannot do that movie inside of a universe, inside of a saga that is all about the importance of legacy and destiny. It spits in the face of the overarching story. And you cannot spit in the face of the bigger story to tell your tiny story. Especially if that is the argument you use to throw out the EU. You can't say, oh, there were inconsistencies in there. And then one of your main point, when one of your main stories in your universe does the same thing. You can't do it. And I mean, really, you watch The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi back to back. The Last Jedi goes and undoes everything that J.J. Abrams was setting up. And I guarantee you, I haven't seen it yet. I don't even know, we don't even know the name of the movie yet. But I guarantee you, episode nine, reconnects to The Force Awakens and largely ignores The Last Jedi. Plus, let's just, let's just talk about the characters for a moment. Han Solo. In the EU, he's a general, he's a father, he's a happy man. He, his life turned out pretty well. I mean, he lost some kids, he's heartbroken by that, Chewbacca died. He definitely goes through some shit. But he comes out the other side. And him and Leia this marriage and relationship grows stronger. Luke Skywalker, he has setbacks on his path, but he keeps going and keeps striving to be a better man and a better teacher and a better leader to his people. The Force Awakens just destroys all of these people's legacies. Luke, Han, they die such pathetic deaths. And it's just like, do you hate the original characters? Are you trying to just destroy their whole legacies? What was the point of that? Not to mention the fact that Chewbacca had no, in The Last Jedi, had no, no real reaction to Han's death. Just, they used him for laughs, and his best friend, the guy who saved his life, just died. And he's just like, oh, we gotta not eat you because you're fucking cute? What the fuck is that? No, I'm sorry. You can't sit there and claim that that's made by fans of Star Wars who appreciate the lore when it doesn't treat it seriously, when it doesn't pay respects 
to even the stories in its own timeline. It's as convoluted as the X-Men movies. The EU always paid tribute to what came before. And I'm sorry, in the EU, Luke Skywalker named this is this has always bothered me. I'll, I'll end my case on this. I'll end my argument on this. <laughs> the EU, Luke Skywalker named his son Ben. In Disney Wars, Han Solo named his son Ben. Luke Skywalker's whole life was upended and changed by Ben Kenobi. He was his first teacher, taught, taught him the way of the Force. He was a father figure to him and literally changed Luke Skywalker's life. Leia never met the man and Han Solo didn't like him. Why would Han and Leia name their child Ben? It makes much more sense for Luke to name his son Ben. Han and Leia naming the son Anakin makes more sense. Jason, Jaina, I mean, I like the names, but whatever. Ben makes no sense for them. It makes a lot more sense for Luke like the EU did. And if you're rebooting everything to make it all new, why are you still in the name from Luke Skywalker's son? You bastards. Well, that was definitely spirited and long-winded. Your counter to that? The notion that Ben Kenobi didn't change Han's life and Leia's life is ludicrous. Meeting Ben Kenobi put Han Solo on a path to meet Leia, to join the rebellion, to have a son, to help defeat the Empire, save Leia from the Death Star, accomplish her life goal. Ben Kenobi set them down on that path. Of course they would have kids. As far as Luke having a son, well, Luke's a Jedi. Jedi can't have children. We saw what happened when Anakin tried that, so enough of that. So for your other points, the notion that Star Wars is about destiny and legacy, yeah, I, I'll grant you that those do seem to be themes in the over, overarching larger story, but you don't need that to be the main story forever. That doesn't always have to be the point. And what if the reason why the history is repeating itself is because of that reliance on destiny and legacy. Luke was the son of Anakin. Anakin was the chosen one. Luke was his son. It just repeats itself and then we get the same result. An empire-like an empire-like government and a rebellion. But Rey not having anything to do with any of them, not being anyone of importance. She can change that. She can alter the fate of the galaxy because she's not a part of the grand design. That is important. That is amazing. That is more powerful than anything George Lucas did, anything that happens in your books. That is truly what Star Wars should be about. Because if a story cannot adapt and change with the times, then it doesn't deserve to survive. And that is what Star Wars is doing. It is adapting and it is changing. And because of that, it is better. The old Star Wars books has kept telling the same story over and over again, and it had no substance. Now we have substance, we have meaning, we have things that are changing and growing and being better. And that is what we as fans should want. Well said and concise. Closing arguments. I guess in closing what I'm saying is it doesn't have to be one of the other. I'm not sitting here saying throw out Disney Wars. That universe has a place, now it's here, it has its own fans, it has people who love it, it has people who would be as devastated if it was cancelled as fans of the EU was when we were cancelled. We can have both. And having both does nothing but strengthen the universe. It builds fans of both who think they cross over, there could be debates, there could be arguments. You strike up conversations. But how it stands now is one side clearly won and the other side clearly lost and there is no argument. It's either or. There's no room for middle ground and middle ground is what we need. Keep Disney Wars, give us the EU and let both of them live. Because just think about what it would be like if right now Episode 9 is about to come out, and the trilogy, and I'm sorry, but you're talking about Disney's doing stronger than ever, and the box offices and all that. They're canceling the Star Wars spin-off movies, a lot of them, because they're not making as much money as they thought. They're oversaturizing the market, but also they're not giving fans the stories they want. Solo, I liked it, but it was more of a Blade Runner movie than it was a Star Wars movie. They're not 
giving movies to people who know what the movie is. And they're firing directors in the middle of production. They're micromanaging it too much to the point where it doesn't have any room to breathe and grow. You had room to breathe and grow. Maybe there's hiccups here and there. But it's because it was growing into something. Where Star Wars is making the same mistake that Disney, that not Disney, they aren't Disney, the same mistake that Warner Brothers made with DC Comics, the DC movie universe. They're going too fast, too hard, and trying to be Marvel. And ironically enough, Lu uh, Lucasfilms is doing the same thing. They're trying to be Marvel. But it's like you work both work for Disney. Just walk across the hall and talk to Marvel, see how they're doing it. You do it naturally, it's a slow progression. I get you spend a lot of money on it and you want quick results, but life doesn't work that way. And you trying to jump ahead of the curve, you're alienating a lot of people who built that fan base. And that doesn't do anyone any good. Instead of giving back the EU and strengthening Star Wars for the future, you're gonna kill it. And then they'll reboot it again, and neither one of us will have anything we love. And it'll be all new shit. They'll even throw out the original trilogy. And I don't think anyone really wants that. But that's my two cents. I rest my case. Thank you, Marvel. DC. Closing arguments. In closing, honestly, I don't even know why this is a discussion. Lucasfilms own Star Wars. Disney owns Lucasfilms. This is the route that they and the people that they trust with the Star Wars universe have wanted to go in. Why do the rest of us think that we can question their choices? We don't know what the ultimate plan for it is. We don't know where it's going. We should enjoy it. We should sit back and enjoy what they're giving us. They're giving us better looking films. They're giving us more films than we've had. We have a riches of films that we've never had before. We almost have as many films now in the last five years than we've had since the first one came out in the 70s. It's insane and people are complaining about it. You should just be thankful. Because if you keep complaining, if you don't like the new stuff and you like, oh, we don't, I don't like it, we should get rid of it, they'll just get rid of all of it and there will be nothing. At least now there's a version of the thing you like. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but you're not as good a storyteller. You don't have the track record of Kathleen Kennedy and J.J. Abrams. These are people who have been making movies longer than you've been watching them. And you don't think that they know what they're doing? You don't think that they haven't thought of every possible outcome on how to make the best stories possible? You claim that you want Star Wars to continue and to thrive. But you're splitting the audience, you're arguing about it, you're debating it. All you're going to do is kill it so that there's nothing. And who wants that? If we want Star Wars to thrive and to continue into the future, we have to forget the EU and move on. Thank you. Thank you both. I've listened to the arguments that both of you have made, and there are strong opinions on both sides. Ultimately, DC is correct that Lucasfilms owns this property and they can do with it as they please. If you don't like it, you either buy it or you don't. And if you don't, then there's every possibility that Star Wars just dies and ceases to exist. And if you're really a fan of it, that would be a shame. On the other hand, Marvel makes an interesting point that why can't they coexist? The notion that the audience would be confused or not be able to follow along with the different storylines doesn't really seem to hold merit when you think about the fact that a lot of these people have followed different storylines, different versions of the same character. In a world where we reboot things every three minutes, it makes sense that they could follow different versions of events and not have any problem dealing with it. Also, Ghostbusters tried to reboot, it didn't sit well, and now they're reverting back to the original universe. Maybe there's something to be said about course correcting when things don't go the way you're wanting it, the way you project it to go. Um, if it were up to me, I'd go with Marvel's method of continuing both universes. What will Lucasfilms do? Who knows? But what would you guys in the 
audience like to happen. Comment below and tell us. Till next time, I'm the judge.